about to say? Uh, I appreciate y'all coming because too much, too much battle going on around here. Too much, too much kids getting shot. Yes, sir. Just going on. It's unnecessary. Yes, sir. Can I show you something? I want to, I want to read the Bible to you. All right. So give me Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. I want to read something to you. Because I, I know as an older man, there was a time you didn't see much violence in the community amongst, amongst, amongst our people, did you? You can leave your front, six to seven years old. During that time, you can leave your front door open. Kids can walk outside and play. You can walk down the street without anybody bust you upside your head. Watch this. How y'all brothers doing? Y'all go check us out, man. Read what you got. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. Uh, a friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. You hear that? A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born in adversity. So there'll be times when we go through struggles and troubles that that's when we should be built up around one another and love one another. A lot of times in our, our community, we lack love. You know what that love is according to the Bible? Love is got to be there for one another. Love thy neighbors, you love yourself, right? One of the two great commandments that Christ is talking about. So we're going to show you what love is according to the Bible. Because a lot of our people don't know what love is. Hey, how you doing, brother? A lot of our people don't know what love is, so we're going to show you what love is according to the Bible. And this is one. This is what our community is missing right here. All right? Read what you got. First John chapter 5, verse 3. Uh -huh. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. You know what the word grievous mean? I mean, it's not hard to do. The love of God is to keep the commandments. We read, when we open up, the brother, we, we're going to get Leviticus chapter 5 verse 1. God said we have to keep the commandments. So part of his commandments is when we see crime going on in our community, we got to bring that thing forth. Or what's going to happen? Crime is going to continue to happen. Watch what the Bible says, because you hear the code. What's the code in the street amongst the young people? What do they say? You shouldn't what? Stop what? Uh, I don't know as much young people. Right? They say, you ever heard the term, they say stop snitching? Yeah, 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 I hear it. But let's see what the Bible says. I don't call it snitching. What do you call it? Protecting. Protecting. That's, and that's exactly what it is. It's protecting your community and the livelihood of your people. That's exactly what it is. Yes, sir. Brilliant. Read what you got. Leviticus chapter 5 verse 1. Uh -huh. And if a soul sin uh -huh. and hear the voice of swearing and is a witness, whether he hath seen or known of it, if he do not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. You know how we see that? That's a, when he say he shall bear his iniquity, that's a judgment from the Most High. How is that perpetuated in our community? If a brother sees another brother or another sister get gunned down by their own people and they don't say anything, God said you will bear their iniquity. What's some ways a brother will bear that iniquity? The way is if you keep your mouth shut, I don't call it snitching, I call it Yeah, if you keep your mouth shut, what happens ultimately if you keep your mouth shut if something happens to your people? It's going to keep going on and on. Guess what? The next person that could be gunned down could be you or your, one of your family members or one of your friends. That's what, that's what could happen. And you said it's going to keep going on and on and on. You know why? Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 8, start at verse 11. All right? What was you about to say, sir? They, they, they back it. Okay, when I was coming up, they uh -huh. were going to try with tribulation. Exactly. You still go through these, but your tribe with tribulation, you put on yourself, your tribe is to make you better than tribulation, then you're going to speak up. Absolutely. How you doing, sister? Fine. Did you get a flyer? Uh, yeah, I got one. All right, come back, check us out. You come out of the store, sis. Read what you got. But this is going into what you were just talking about, sir, as far as you said it's going to continue to happen. So we ask ourselves, if we, if we don't apply the law of Leviticus 5 and 1, why does the crime and hatred in our community continue to happen? This is why. Read what you got. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 11. Uh -huh. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Why is it executed speedily? Because our people remain silent when a crime is broken. If they were to say something and call the police immediately, they know who did it and see who did it, it would be executed speedily. But one of the reasons it's not executed speedily in our community because we don't apply the law of Leviticus 5 and 1. Read what you got. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. So guess what now? Now the hearts of the brothers and sisters of the community is fully set to do evil. Oh, I just killed somebody. Nobody called the cops on me. Nobody's, nobody's saying anything, so guess what? Next time they have a problem with somebody else, they're going to kill another person another person. 
Now, sin abounds in the community because fear has been put over the people. Right. Remember, God is not a God of fear. Continue to read. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times. Though somebody keep doing evil over and over and keep robbing, keep stealing, keep killing in the community over a hundred times. Read. And his days be prolonged. Uh -huh. Yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God. Do you understand what I mean when it says, though their days be prolonged? You, wanna, you ever ask yourself, how is it this person can die young and they ain't done nothing to nobody, but this person continually to do evil in the community, sell drugs, and they, they living for a long time? Read that part again, so. Yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. How would, we, how would it be well with them that fear God? I fear God. Baby. You fear God? I fear God. It, it is mine. People ask me everything. How you doing? I tell them how to be humble. Right. I'm going to show you something. Hold that. We're going to go back to this. Give me Psalms chapter 111 and verse 10. Because we're going to show you what the fear of God is. Because it says, go to the ones that fear God. So we're going to show you what the fear of God is. Then we're going to jump back into, into Ecclesiastes. All right? Watch what you got. Read what you got. Psalms chapter 111 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You hear what the Bible saying? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Read. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. If you fear God, you will do his commandments. And you will get understanding of this Bible. Now you understand, if our people kept God's commandments, we'll understand why applying Leviticus 5 and 1 is so important. Why would she say something when something is happening in our community? Jump back to Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. How you doing, sister? Hi, how are you? All right. Okay, all praise to the most high. You from the tribe of Gad, a mighty tribe, a mighty tribe. And sister, what we're what we showing the brother right here, we're trying to, bring, trying to show our people in our community our faults and how we have to hold ourselves responsible. When we see something going wrong in our community, we have to step up as men and women and protect one another. All right, so what he, Brother Brother's about to go into right now is why sin continues to go on in our community. Right. And the reason that's happening because no one's holding each other accountable. We're allowing that thing to keep going on. Start from the beginning, verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11. Uh -huh. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. I was showing the brother earlier, the reason people keep killing our community and doing crime in our community, because nobody's saying anything. That's why it keeps happening. Read. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. How are young people acting in our communities? Foolishness. They, foolishness. they always flashing guns and recording themselves. And these young people, 16, 17, 18 years old, they're catching bodies. They're killing people. And nobody's correcting them. None of their peers are correcting them. And the elders in the community are afraid to correct them. Read. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, uh -huh. and his days be prolonged. Yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. So we showed the brother earlier in Psalms that to fear God is to keep his commandments. And one of the commandments we brought out earlier is Leviticus 5 and 1, basically saying, if you see something, say something. God said, if you don't apply that, you're going to bear that iniquity. So sis, if somebody sees a brother over here get killed, nobody says anything. Guess what? That next person can be killed because one of your loved ones or one of your loved ones. Now, we, the whole community has to bear that iniquity that that brother committed because nobody wanted to say anything. Read what you got. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days. So the ones that's doing the evil, their days aren't going to be long on this earth. It seems like they're getting away with it, but God says their days are going to be short. Read. Which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. When you walk around, does your shadow continue to stay on your heads? Can you up, avoid your shadow? Just like people that do evil, they can't avoid death. Right. Death is going to come upon them. That's what God is telling you in the scripture. So well, one of the main things that's very important for our people to know is to know who they are and know where they come from. So sis, I want to show you something on this sign right here. You're from the tribe of Gad, the so-called American Indians. This is what God calls you. And sir, let me show you something on the sign as well. It's very important to know who y'all, because you gotta understand this Bible only applies to a certain group of people. These people right here, they make up the 12 tribes of Israel. These people are scattered to the four corners of the earth. Right. 
through the translator slave trade, through the sub-Saharan slave trade, and any other slave trade that happened to our people. We've been carried across the waters from the Philippines to the South Americas, to the, Europe to the Europeans, to the North Americans, to Canada, all over the world. These people are the same people, but we've been broken up by being called by words and, pro and proverbs. We've called Haitians, Puerto Ricans, American Indians, Argentinians, Mexicans, but God calls us the children of Israel. That's what he calls us. If we are, if we're walking down the street, sister, they'll look at you and I and say, oh, that's not your sister because your skin complexion different or because your hair texture different. God says we're blood. God says he calls us a family. That's what he calls us. I'm going to show you, you know, God put a separation between people. God put a separation between the children of Israel and everybody else. And I'm going to show you that. Give me 2nd Ezra chapter 6. 2nd Ezra chapter 6. And I want to show you something. I want to show you, after you pull this scripture, to show you that God put a separation between us and everybody else in the world, that the world is made for our sakes. I want to show you how your people, how your tribe got over here. We're all brothers and sisters. These 12 tribes, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we're all family. We got the same blood running through our, through our body. But the northern kingdom, which your tribe came from, came over here first. We're going to show you that in the Bible, that history, all right? Read what you got. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 54. Uh -huh. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. So all people on the face of this planet come from Adam. But watch this, read. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. So God has a chosen people. We're going to get that for you. Read. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. God made the world for the sake of the chosen. Read. As for the other people. And as for the other people that come from Adam outside of his chosen people, what does God think about? Them? Which also come of Adam. Uh -huh. Thou hast said that they are nothing. What did God say? They are nothing. So God has a group of people that he says is his chosen people. They're his children. They're his firstborn. But everybody else, God says they are nothing. So does that sound like equality or does that sound like God has a favorite people? Don't sound like equality, does it? Men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Oh!